Hi everybody, this is Josh from Pomeroy Creative. In this video, we're going to be looking at some amazing creative tools from Autodesk. The project I'm working on is a customized illustrated deck of playing cards. I've been creating some uh, customized playing cards for a while now, and I, I use my own illustrations for all of the face cards. And I've been inspired um, by J.R.R. Tolkien growing up, reading his books, and with the movies being very popular, I wanted to do a dwarf deck of cards. So we're going to start that in Autodesk Sketchbook, and then I'm going to show you how I take those initial sketches and finish them in Graphic. Graphic is a fantastic vector-based application, and we're going to use that to finalize our illustrations and get them ready to put on cards. So it's going to be fun and I hope you enjoy this video. We've got a, just a blank untitled document in here and that's what I'm going to use to just start drawing. And I've got the pencil selected by default and I'm going to choose, I'm actually going to pull up my, my, uh, my color editor here and I use this like cyan color. I like using that. It's kind of like using a blue pencil. and. Um, I'm just going to start on layer one here and start sketching. Now, one thing I really just like to do is just do a few loose and dirty strokes. That just kind of helps me get uh, practice drawing circles. Maybe it just kind of helps me get a, a flow. I don't want to start cold um, on, on sketching anything. So I just like start practicing drawing some circles. I can always get rid of this or move it around or whatever. Maybe draw some lines. So a couple of things, I'm just getting sort of re-familiar with my, my pressure sensitivity, which is fantastic. And um, if you need to adjust any of this, you can do that from uh, the edit menu. You can uh, adjust the stylus responsiveness. I'll just show you that right about there is where I keep it, 75, 80%-ish. And uh, that seems to work really well for me. I can be pretty heavy handed sometimes. So, okay. I'm just going to move that over here. Go back to my pencil. Basically, I treat this canvas just as I would treat my sketch journal. So I, I often sketch on paper as well, but uh, having Autodesk and, a, and a, a very portable Wacom tablet, I don't have to take pictures or scan my stuff later on. It's just all right here. And of course, on a computer, you can do so much more and so much faster than you can on, on traditional pen and paper. What I'm gonna do is kind of sketch out here and I'm holding shift, you can draw straight lines. This is kind of how I would do it on, uh, like I said, like on a piece of paper. I like to draw sort of a game plan for myself. By the way, I'm just using spacebar. I love the navigation features and I love how it's kind of all built into one function, one key. Spacebar, I can zoom. I can pan and I can rotate. I love that. You've been able to do that for a long time in sketchbook, but all right. So this is my card, right? So as you see, I'm just I'm keeping things really loose and, and really fast. Um, but what I want to do is just basically create a little thumbnail for myself. And what I'm going to start with is the, the dwarf king. Now I'm going to have four different kings, but I'll just pick one to start with. And I think Already, uh, I'm just going to put up here, this is going to be the K, and of course down here it's going to be reversed. It's like a, like a playing card deck, right? And uh, maybe his suit, I'll do the hearts, right? So I'll just draw that like this. I think that I want to draw the first king kind of facing this way, okay? So I even kind of draw some guides for myself, right? All right, so I'm going to zoom in. Where I feel comfortable, grab my eraser. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So this king's going to be facing this way, and on this side he's going to be facing this way. But the great thing is, I only have to draw one, and then I can flip it, do whatever else I want to do with it. So I'm going to rough in a very, very rough sketch. Uh, I want to have 
sort of a helmet that's also a, a crown. Um, he's going to have a big beard and mustache. I think that I want to give him some kind of like uh, nose piece on his helmet. Okay, he's going to have sort of a, a gruff looking... expression. Um, not sure how the crown is going to look on top of this helmet, but uh, I'm going to use a lot of sort of straight angles as well to give this, this, this dwarf deck a real strong stone-like character. So um, maybe big shoulder armor here, and then maybe His arm come around his, his chest like this. Have a big old gauntlet. This is knuckles. Okay, so this is just thumbnail sketching, right? And what I'm going to do is maybe I want to I want it to kind of flow into the the other one of him. Okay, so he's going to be flipped. You've seen a deck of cards before, so you you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just drawing one half of this. And of course, it's not set up proportionally, but this just gives me an idea. Okay, I can uh, I can maybe make this a little better. So I'm just using some of the tools here in the sketchbook, right, to really kind of help myself out. My favorite tools to use in sketchbook are the pencil, pretty straightforward, uh, and it responds very well to the pressure input from the Wacom, and the, the Copic markers. Um, what's really nice about these is I'm able to work very quickly. The Copic markers basically act as like a multiply layer without having to set that up at all. So I can just switch to a Copic marker and start coloring right on top of my sketch, even on the same layer. It won't go over my pencil drawings. It leaves those intact and acts just like a marker would act on paper. Another thing I like about Sketchbook is the uh, ability to use layers. Now, I use layers a couple of different ways. One is to actually separate the process of illustration. So if I want to do a sketch layer and then kind of refine that those lines, I can do that on another layer without having to change or compromise the initial sketch. Sometimes those sketches, that moment of inspiration, are the best things to keep around. Another way that I like to use layers is basically as like another sheet of paper. So I could fill up a whole uh, canvas with sketches and then just hide that layer and start a new layer and do a whole bunch more sketches. I don't have to create a new document. I can just add a new layer and keep my ideas flowing. So once I get the basic thumbnail sketched up, I just move over and start sort of designing. So the first thing that I might want to do is is just get his character, his face, maybe his expression. And so rather than trying to draw this whole thing, now that I have a thumbnail, I know, I know kind of where I, I'm going to end up. And now I can really kind of hone in on different things that that I want to add detail to. So I know that he's going to be wearing a helmet, so I, I like to bring this piece up and draw it a lot nicer and, and bigger and, and put more detail into it. But I'm still being very loose and quick. So uh, like I said, I know I'm drawing from drawing him from the side. He's going to be wearing kind of a, a crown type uh, thing on his helmet. Um, I might want to put some jewels in this. Not exactly sure how all the details are going to fit together. Like, like I said, this is just kind of, I, I find the best way for me to get the ideas onto the canvas and refine them as I go. So maybe there's sort of a bigger sort of gem in the middle of his crown, right? And then maybe there's some intricate work on the side here. And then I want to have maybe the, the helmet part peeking up here. Sort of a very kingly helmet. Okay, just adding in some very rough values. 
his eye on him to look kind of stern and battle hardened. Right? Give him some wrinkles. And his nose, I might have to bring out this. Let's move this a little bit. I have to move this, uh, this nose piece. Because I want his nose to really stick out more. So you can see how, how uh, you can really manipulate things here in the sketchbook. Got his nose underneath here, right? And a mustache. And I can look back over here in my thumbnail too, just kind of see how that's supposed to fit like that. So big old mustache. The side piece of his helmet maybe come down like something like this and, and like I said have those angles in there. Alright and then I really want his beard uh, exaggerated and to kind of flip up almost like it's been manicured or combed because he's the king so. Maybe even put in some curls in here. I don't. I, I'm not sure yet. I'm liking this, and this this really uh, is getting me closer to what I know I'm wanting. Alright, so maybe this shoulder piece too, we'll do that with this. I really want this beefy and big. Maybe there's some details in this or runes or jewels. I mean, he is the king after all. Okay, and then maybe, maybe there's a, maybe there's a cloak or a cape kind of underneath that big chunky piece. I, it almost looks like an anvil or a hammer, and I kind of like that. Okay, and then his arm is going to come around his chest. But he's going to have a big beefy arm, kind of go underneath his beard, and he's going to have this big gauntlet. And maybe I'm going to have him holding like a mace or something right here. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to draw his knuckles. Just kind of block them in. I know he's going to be having armor and some kind of chunky gauntlet. Maybe some big iron knuckles. Okay. Zoom out, kind of look. This is looking really good. I, I, I like this. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room and get rid of some of this. Okay. I'm just going to move everything over. See, so, so I'm just kind of going in progression. Again, using this as a sketchbook, not taking it too seriously because this is not um, intended to be the final render. This is not even necessary. It's supposed to look pretty. It's just conceptualizing any ideas. I think I want to do some little studs on this. And uh, I'm going to pick a different color. Um, let's go with red. Let me zoom in on here. And kind of indicate, I think I want these to be kind of like you 
either, either jewels or like iron studs and I want them to be like pentagons or something like that. Okay. And now I'm going to use the ruler, which on the keyboard, uh, the shortcut key is R. And what I want to do is I want him to be holding something here in his hand, and I'm not exactly sure yet what that is. But the ruler tool is really great for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to use the ruler and line it up, and uh, and draw in some lines here. See how that works? And I can just move it over to draw a parallel line, just like that. Maybe have part of it coming out. his hand there and now I've, I've, I've at least got uh, you know sort of this thick right <laughs> and I think that it's gonna be some kind of mace or uh, scepter maybe maybe a, a dual purpose maybe it's a scepter and it's like a mace It's got a, a hilt. Maybe, maybe there's a jewel on there, or jewels kind of surrounding it. And uh, it's going to be made of wood, but sort of adorned with with metal and jewels and. I'll keep this red and just kind of draw more pieces in here, things that I know are, are kind of like different objects than what I have so far. And then that maybe this arm is just kind of, let me go back to blue here. And I'll go to this blue. Okay, this arm maybe is just kind of straight underneath his cloak. Or maybe what you just see is, is a big piece of his breastplate. And then it kind of fades off. Maybe he's got some scales or some kind of armor underneath that on his belly. Or a big, or a big belt buckle. Yeah. Big chunky belt buckle. Alright, so. I'm pretty excited about this. Alright, so so here um, I can I can continue refining this. In fact, I'm just going to take what I have, copy that, paste it on a, a new layer. We're going to move it over here. And uh, I'm going to use the Copic markers to uh, to color this and I think that one because it's gonna be a deck of cards um, I started with kind of the king of hearts we're gonna keep him red uh, so any 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 jewels any cloth any clothing like that we're gonna keep red so that we can you know we keep our suits uh, very um, easily e easily visible so we're gonna use some Copic colors here I like I like these uh, Copic markers quite a bit. <laughs> Very cool. Zoom in on this. You can change your um, size. the uh, The fat marker here has a minimum size, so maybe we'll go down to the smaller one. But using the bracket keys, just like in Photoshop, we'll change your brush size all right let's pull in some you know what since he's gonna be 
one of the kings. I'm going to use some of these yellows, some of these kind of gold colors, and give them all gold armor. You see how these markers, uh, they don't, um, they don't cover up all my lines. I mean, they, they act just like markers would act, um, without having to set up like a multiply layer or, uh, or put my, my tool itself on like multiply blend mode. I can just draw. I want to be I kind of like I like I like this maybe the maybe the underneath here is armor as well. This color um, process also really helps sort of establish the different areas. Because my lines are very, very loose, so this kind of helps separate what things are. What? All right, so now I'm going to use one of these browns here. And, um,. Let's go with kind of a light orange. Let's use light orange. So I'm going to put in some a little bit of value with this. Armor. And I just really love how these blend together. Now I could do this on a on a separate layer. Um, but one thing I like, especially with, at this stage, is is just being quick and uh, getting stuff down. So I can even use this for his skin tone just to just to start with. And again, to help separate the different areas, different objects. I even think I want to give him like a bright red beard. Maybe he's a ginger dwarf.
All right, so uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I could I could definitely go back in and, and do more. I might actually um, do some white colored pencil on top here. And uh, again, this will really help help me establish both uh, form and uh, structure. At this point, I'm still not being very concerned with intricate details, but more conceptualization and making sure that uh, the composition reads well. Use my ruler again. Get a nice edge here on this scepter mace thing. Just a little bit of edge light there to help myself see where that is in this big sketchy mess. <laughs> I could then go in maybe with a, a black pencil as well. And uh, and then start refining a few more details. I don't I don't really like um, putting hard edges on everything, especially at this stage. Uh, especially knowing that. We're gonna we're gonna make the, all of this into a vector illustration. So, um, and the type of illustration that that I like to do uh, isn't so much about lines as it is about forms and shapes. So, I'm not really uh, putting this in as as like line work as much as I am. Uh, just to help me establish those shapes. I think his eye needs to be a little bit more like that, and we'll fix all this. You can hold down Alt and uh, sample a color.
But I've got so many lines on this, uh, so uh, I can reestablish or reinterpret some of this information because it wasn't so uh, so precise about it, or so uh, nothing was really f finalized, and um, that that actually helps me not not be so committed to an idea that may not be that great and um, I can kind of reinterpret it as I go But I'm getting to a place where I feel pretty happy. And I'm, I'm liking this as sort of the first Dwarf King. Now that we've got some sketches that I'm happy with, what I'll do then is save these out as PNG files and import them into Autodesk Graphic. So stay tuned for the next video as we move into vector illustration using these concepts and getting them finalized and polished in Autodesk Graphic. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.